to Jeff and I and to my uh, Romans 8 discussion with Pastor Robinson. Here's, here's how it starts. Hello, everyone. It's Ben the Baptist here. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on Pastor Jason Robinson's recent appearance on James White's show. That's right. He actually went onto his radio show and he wiped the floor with him. He totally exposed the folly of the doctrine of devils known as Calvinism, and he made him look like a pseudo-intellectual fool. I loved it. And you know what, folks? You need to check out so we're we're not going to get a um, much of a, a fair review here, obviously, um, from um, from Ben the Baptist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, <laughs> but what is fascinating is after ripping the story, then he he goes through a section again, accusing Jeff and I of of sexual sins and things like that. And one of the things I would simply say to Ben, because I know he'll watch this, he'll be informed about this. Before I respond to, again, your misrepresentations and misunderstanding of Ephesians 2, but Ben, I, I just want to say something to you. You have seen what's happened there. I saw your video today talking about the split and what's happened and and uh, that you were friends with Adam Fannin and, and, and all the rest of this stuff. Ben, you step out of line one little bit and Anderson, all these people will be on you just as they're on Adam Fannin. You are a part of a cult. And the cult leaders brook no opposition. But I just want to ask you something, sir. I want to ask you to think, what could cause you to join in the slander and false accusations against Ministers you do not know, ministers who have been ministering longer, I've been ministering longer than I think you've been alive, um, who have long track records. Um, I've been married for 36 years. Um, publications, lengthy tenures at churches, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what do you think allows you to slanderously bring accusations against us while at the same time there in your own group, the primary pastor of your church, even though remotely while in your city, the city where you live, allegedly ministering at your church is hanging out with hookers and you didn't see any of it. Didn't see it coming. Did you, Ben? Doesn't mean you have much in the way of discernment, does it, Ben? When are we going to hear repentance from you, Ben the Baptist? When are we going to hear it? Because, see, unlike your friends, we would welcome repentance. We wouldn't fry you like your friends would if you dared to say something against their perspectives. Someday you're going to need to recognize that there is nothing in this movement. It's not historic Christianity by any stretch of the imagination. It is a personality cult. And it will destroy you if you don't get out of it, Ben. And anybody else. Um, take warning. These men will, will slander anyone, but they can't see sin right next to them. And Romero was one of the main people making the accusations. I wonder if he made any of these videos the same time as he was going out to see hookers. That's the question. So keep that in mind, Ben. Um, it, it, might be, it might be wise. But let's at least look at one point that he made. Beyond that, they also did go after yours truly. And they pulled up one of my videos and critiqued it. They claimed that I was deceiving people because in a video where I was correcting James or Jeff Durbin, I keep getting them mixed up, in a video where I was correcting Jeff Durbin for promoting a work salvation, I quoted Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 to prove that salvation is by grace through faith alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, how could you have missed that, Jeff? 
I mean, it's right there. So yeah, I, I uh, actually, that's what I was teaching. Uh, I was I was teaching that night, uh, Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine. Only I also talked about verse ten, which yeah. is conveniently left out of this verse here. Yeah, holding this yeah. together in balance. But, but, but they claim because I omitted verse ten that I was intentionally trying to lead people astray and not being honest. Well, you know what? I love Ephesians two ten. We we're glad that you do. Um, but Ben, you need to understand that we gave a presentation that allows you to read Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 consistently as one argument and shows the intimate relationship that it is God's intention that his people should walk in good deeds. It, we are his workmanship. So that's where you and I disagree. We are his workmanship. You think that we are our workmanship. Whether you, I know you say, no, 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 I don't believe. Yes, you do. You believe in autonomous free will. You do not believe in the doctrine of election found in Ephesians chapter one. If you could actually think that Pastor Robinson even came close to even offering a meaningful interpretation of Romans eight, you, you really don't have any grasp of what the Bible actually teaches on this subject at all. And you don't believe that we are his workmanship. At the very best, you could believe that we are partially his and partially our own because you believe in autonomous free will. Our point is that the decree of God includes all of grace, all of salvation, and the result is that we are to be conformed to the image of his son. It is not works salvation to say that the spirit of God will accomplish the task that has been given to him to conform the people of God to the image of Jesus Christ. Stop saying it is. You are confused. You are wrong. You simply haven't done the study to know what you're talking about. You're repeating human traditions that you've been force-fed and told to repeat by people who themselves didn't do the study that they, they should have done. It is not works salvation to say that is the intention of God that Christians walk in holiness, that we are to repent of our sins. That is what Jesus taught. That's what the disciples taught. That is the consistent message of Scripture. That is absolutely necessary. Okay? So when you get to Ephesians 2.10, we see its intimate relationship not only to verses 8 and 9, but all the way back to chapter 1, and the decree of God that is found beginning in verse 3, found in the Father, worked out through the Son, now being applied by the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can actually read all of Scripture as it flows, and as it shows the deep meaning that is its. I was going to play a little bit more than that, but that's actually a good freeze frame to stop at. Um, and I don't want to push the voice any longer. Um, 